Welcome check! It's English O'Clock! Ang pag-aaral ng English upang madaling matutunan, bakit hindi natin simplihan? Halika! Manood at makinig sa English Teacher ni Juan! Kung bago ka pa lang sa channel na to, huwag kang matakot! I made learning English easy for you! Please like, comment, and subscribe! At pakishare mo na rin sa iba para marami pang mga huwan na gaya mo ang matuto. Hello everyone! I am Sharon P. Bautista, your presenter on today's discussion about poetry for children, focusing on the classification of poetry, narrative poem, and the kinds of narrative poem. So without further ado, let us start. Poetry as a form of literature long predates the existence of the written word. Its use of rhyme, rhythm, and literary devices such as metaphor and simile helped make possible the memorizing of long verses long before the advent writing or even before writing was invented. Though not as popular today amongst readers, it endures still in the popular culture, particularly in hip-hop and rap. The development of an understanding of poetry, how it works, and how to produce it greatly benefits our students, not only from the point of view of learning about our literary heritage, but also in enriching students' lives and helping them to develop their own creativity. Now let me discuss this first topic with you about the classification of poetry. Based on the website where I took this information, it was adapted from Charters Charters, Literature and Its Writers, Compact 2nd Edition, Chapters 8-11, to and the URL which I posted in the slide below. There are different poetry classification. First, the three big categories. Second, its three forms. And lastly, its three types. Under the first three big categories, we have traditional poetry or closed forms, free verse poetry or open forms, and the freestyle poetry. For the three forms, these are the continuous form, stanzaic form, and fixed form. Examples for this form are the sonnet, villanelle, sestina, limerick, haiku, and others. And for the three main types, we have narrative, lyric, and dramatic poetry. So let us learn more about these three big categories according to Lena Covadlo. With traditional verse or traditional poetry, there is usually a specific meter, rhyme scheme, syllable count, style, or form that you have to follow. This type of poetry is usually harder to write than free verse or freestyle poetry. Examples of these are those I already mentioned a while ago under the first form category. Now, the second category with free verse poetry, you refrain from using a specific pattern of rhyme or meter. With freestyle poetry, you don't have a formatted style or pattern but you use rhyme most of the time and therefore create a catchy beat with your words similar to rap. Actually, nowadays, we also have this freestyle poetry. It is recited in front of an audience known as the spoken word poetry, or also refers to an oral poetic performance art. This performance art is actually famous nowadays, especially in the Filipino literature of today. These are mostly about the hugot lines that talks about the bitterness and sweetness of love, or just about any topic where you can freely express your angst in life. There is rhyme here and somewhat melodic, that's why it's really catchy. And for this reason, Filipinos are into it. Now let's proceed to the next. For its three forms, poetry is categorized as continuous form, stanzaic form, and fixed form. Under continuous form, this is written line upon line with no grouping of lines or breaks. As in this example, after the battle, by Victor Marie Hugo. For the stanzaic, we have Acquainted with the Night by Robert Frost. Here, it is obviously written in stanzas. 
In Italian, the word stanza means room. Stanzas then function in a poem like rooms function in a house. Acclaimed poet and former U.S. poet Lorette Billy Collins says, You're taking the reader on a tour of the poem room by room, like taking someone through your house and describing it. In this way, stanzas can be particularly revealing. The structure of a poem stanzas says a lot about the poem, just as the rooms in a house say a lot about the house. And there are also types of stanzas, examples, the tercets and couplet. Lastly, we have the fixed form. Under fixed form, we have examples like Shakespeare and Sonnet. It is a verse form consisting of 14 lines with a fixed rhyme scheme. Another example is Villanelle, a poem written in tercets but with two rhymes forming a couplet at the close. Sestina, another example, is a highly structured poem consisting of six six-line stanzas followed by a tercet or envoy for a total of 39 lines. Limerick is a humorous verse form of five anapestic lines with rhyme scheme AABBA. Haiku is a Japanese verse form of three short lines. So these are just some of the examples of poetry under fixed form. Fixed because they follow a certain number of lines, rhymes, or rhyme scheme, or in short, a certain definite structure. This refers also to the traditional poetry. Now, for the three main types, we have narrative, lyric, and dramatic poetry. Now, based on this website, Children's Literature, Poetry for Children, it only gave two main types of poetry, and that only includes the narrative poetry, which I'm about to discuss later on, and lyric poetry, which will be presented by another discussant. But where is dramatic poetry? Poetry offers children a sensually and intellectually stimulating experience. They don't have to read Shakespeare and Milton to learn to appreciate language play, striking phonetic sounds, and rich imagery. Dramatic poetry, also known as dramatic verse or verse drama, is a written work that both tells a story and connects the reader to an audience through emotions or behavior. A form of narrative closely related to acting, it usually is performed physically and can be either spoken or sung. Dramatic poetry is quite heavy for the children to enjoy. That is why, in children's poetry, it is divided only into two types. As for the types of poetry for children, the best types are fun, humorous, imaginative, creative, and stimulating. So these are the types of poetry for children. First, nursery rhymes. These are traditional poems for young children. Children learn nursery rhymes often before they are even able to talk. Nursery rhymes usually rhyme and contain only a couple of short verses, such as in Jack and Jill and Humpty Dumpty. Some nursery rhymes follow a musical tune such as Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, London Bridge is Falling Down, and Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now, limericks. A limerick is a witty, humorous, or nonsense poem, especially in five lines with a strict rhyme scheme. Example of this limerick is the one entitled, There Once Was a Man from Nantucket. Limericks rhyme like nursery rhymes but usually have a distinctly silly theme. Limericks follow a rhyme scheme of A-A-B-B-A for a total of five lines. The first two lines and the last line generally contain seven to ten syllables, while lines three and four contain five to seven. Now allow me to read this example of Limerick. There once was a man from Nantucket. There once was a man from Nantucket who kept all of his cash in a bucket. 
but his daughter named Nan ran away with a man and asked for the bucket, Nan took it. So as you have heard and seen, this has a rhyme scheme and a silly theme. Next is Haiku. Haiku is originally an old Japanese poem with 3 lines and 17 syllables. The simple structure of Haiku makes it easy for children to imitate. Haiku contains only 3 lines. The first and the third lines are 5 syllables long and the middle line has 7 syllables. Haiku usually captures a single experience in nature. Here is an example of a haiku. Autumn leaf. It is autumn time, a leaf no longer green falls, softly kissing earth. Very short, right? And only captures an experience about nature. Now, next is nonsense verse. Nonsense verse is a type of poetry featuring fantastic images or made-up words that entertains through its wild silliness. An example of nonsense verse is Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll or Louis Carroll. The Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoves and the mome rats upgraded. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jubjub bird and shun, the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the mansome foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree, and stood a while in thought. And as in a fish thought he stood, the jobber walked with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the tulgy wood, and barbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snickersnack. He left it dead, and with its head, he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the jobber walk? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O frabjus de Kalukale, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoves, and the mome rats outgrabe. Next is free verse. Free verse is a style of poetry with no set length or rhyme scheme. Its only rule is that it has no rules. Examples of free verse are alphabet poem, riddle poem, shape poems, or concrete poems. Now this is an example of a free verse. Now the last type of poetry for children is called the narrative verse. Narrative verse is a story told in the form of a poem, epics, and ballads. So this is an example of a narrative verse. It is entitled Paul Reverse Ride, written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Allow me to read this to you. Paul Revere's Ride by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Listen, my children, and you shall hear Of the midnight ride of Paul Revere On the 18th of April in 75 Hardly a man is now alive Who remembers that famous day and year? He said to his friend, if the British march By land or sea from the town tonight Hang a lantern aloft in the belfry arch of the North Church Tower as a signal light. One if by land and two if by the sea, and I on the opposite shore will be, ready to ride and spread the alarm 
through every Middlesex village and farm for the country folk to be up and to arm. So this poem describes the action-packed night of April 18, 1775, the famous ride of Paul Revere. It starts in Boston where Paul and a friend are talking about the British Army. They think the soldiers are going to leave Boston that night but they aren't sure whether they will go by land or sea. Paul has a plan to warn people in the countryside about the British coming but he needs to know which direction they are taking. So the two men agree on a secret code. Paul's friend will signal him by hanging one lantern in the church belfry or belfry if the British are marching out on land. Two lanterns if they are living in boats. After agreeing on, uh, on this plan, Paul rows across the river and waits for the signal. It's actually quite a long poem. Now as you have noticed, there are elements like characters, setting, plot in this poem. Meaning to say, this is telling us a story by giving us a clear picture of these elements. So narrative verse is a narrative poem. So what is a narrative poem? Based on the example, a narrative poem tells a story in verse, has plot, characters, and settings, has rhymes but not always, and meter, features a single speaker or the narrator. It may be short or long or simple or complex. The only part which matters is that it tells a story which is often non-dramatic and holds an objective regular scheme and meter. Now let's talk about origins of narrative poetry. The earliest poetry was not written but spoken, recited, chanted, or sung. Poetic devices like rhythm, rhyme, and repetition made stories easier to memorize so they could be transported long distances and handed down through generations. Narrative poetry evolved from this oral tradition. In nearly every part of the world, narrative poetry established a foundation for other literary forms. For example, among the highest achievements of ancient Greece are the Iliad and the Odyssey, which have inspired artists and writers for more than 2,000 years. Narrative poetry became an enduring literary tr tradition throughout the Western world. The Anglo-Saxon narrative Beowulf has inspired modern-day books, movies, operas, and even computer games. In the East, India produced two monumental Sanskrit narratives. The Mahabharata or the Mahabharat is the world's longest poem with over 100,000 couplets. The timeless Ramayana spreads Indian culture and ideas across Asia, influencing literature, performance, and architecture. Now let's talk about the kinds of narrative poems. The kinds of narrative poems or its four main types are the following. We have ballad, epic, idyll, and lay. A ballad is a poem similar to a folktale which uses a repeated refrain. This means that every few stanzas, a portion of the poem is repeated, much like a song. Epic is a long, serious poem which tells the story of a hero. It is extremely long like the stories of Iliad and Odyssey. Biag Nilamang is an example of a Filipino epic. Next, Idil. A poem about either an idolized country scene or about the heroes of yesteryear. This could also include the story of Odyssey, except for different reasons. An ideal speaks of someone or something in a way that it should be idolized. For example, today many stories of Gandhi or Martin Luther King Jr. could be written about an, in an ideal. However, an even better example could be George Washington. Lastly, the lay. 
A long poem which was sung by medieval minstrels, the long poems generally were about the news of the day or historical facts they wished to be passed along throughout the countryside. Now let me show you an example for each of the four main types. For ballad, the Ballad of the Harp Weaver by Edna St. Vincent Millay. For epic, the Iliad by Homer. For idyls, we have Idyls of the King. The Passing of Arthur by Alfred Lord Tennyson. And lastly, for Lay, The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. So, did you learn something today? Sure ako na hindi ka na nosebleed? If you want more of this video tutorial and learn English in a light speed, huwag kalimutang mag-subscribe at turn on ang notification button para updated ka sa mga bagong lessons. Ako ang teacher mo, ang English teacher ni Juan. Class dismissed! See ya!